So next to the main feature heading, um, this is broken into two sections. So we've got um, part of the text is going to be red on a white background, and then the rest of it is going to be huge text, which is going to be two different colors on a yellow background. So uh, for this one, I'm going to double click and I'm going to select the first two lines of text, copy those. In fact, I'm going to cut those, hit the escape key and then paste and then get them in there. Um, I need to set, first of all, um, the font style in here. So that's going to be, again, Myriad Pro, black. It's going to be center aligned. It's also going to have a size in this time, which is much larger. It's going to be 32 points with a leading value of 29. And then press return. Uh, I'm going to hit the escape key and then just pull this text frame out. So I get three words on each line. There is a forced line break in here. Um, and then the color of that text, if I select it, needs to be take a break red. And I'll press return to make the pop-up disappear. So we have our text in there. And then this time I'm going to show you a different way to get a background behind your text without having to put a box there. So in this case, um, I'm going to go to my character styles panel because this is the way we do it with the other technique. Click and drag and then just dock that underneath. Make sure that all of my text is selected. Go down to the bottom. Hold down the Alt key, Alt and left click to create a new character style. I'm going to call this white background. Make sure the checkbox for apply style selection is turned on and preview. And then I'll click OK. I'm doing that because I want to create the style and apply it to the text, but I don't want my text highlighting to get in the way of, of formatting that. So I'm going to hit the escape key, then hover over, right click on white background and choose edit. And then from the list of options, go to underline. If I turn underline on, then that's what we'll get. We'll get an underline that's the same color as the text. So first off, if I change that to the color background we need, which is paper of white, it changes. Now, the thing with this is it ceases to be an underline when it becomes really big and it becomes a background. So you can just keep increasing the weight of the underline and it turns into something you can use as a background. So if I go for, let's say, 30 in here, we then need to change the position of it. So uh, over to offset, and if I just say type in one in there and um, I can hit the tab key, there needs to be a value for some strange reason in these fields for the up and down buttons to work in here. So if I keep tapping down, that will move the white background up in there. So if I move that to say minus 10, so that's just about right. We've got some uh, white space above and below. I'll then click on OK. But what you feel, will find with this technique is if I just double click in the text from you have to press the space bar to put a space in here. There's already one at the end. I need to put a space in at the beginning and a space in here at the end as well to color that in. So that's the little extra steps that we have to do in there. So that technique to get a white background in there, or a background to your text, similar end result to one that we did up here, but all of that was done in a paragraph style with something called paragraph shading. So me personally, if it's something like these big blocks of text in here, I tend to prefer the paragraph shading one. So it's all done in the paragraph style itself. But it depends how you want to work. I mean, you could, as I say, you could just put a box in the background behind your text and just format the text without the crazy background um, uh, underlines and paragraph shading in there. So that's the first one. I then need to take this text frame and then I'm going to click on this icon at the top to shrink the text frame in there. I'm just going to get rid of the extra space that I don't need in there. So delete that. And then for this one, this one's going to be quite sizable. So this one again, Myriad Pro Black, the size of the text is 60 points with a leading value of 50 points. And it's all going to be left aligned. And then, then from this point onwards, just going to color the color text already color black, hit the escape key, pull the text frame down so we can see all the characters inside of there. And then move this into here. So, and we've got the uppercase in here exactly as needed. This is exactly how it matches the cover of Take a Break magazine. So we just need to pull the text over here a little bit, just away from the lady. It's just catching her arm. I'm not too concerned, not too concerned with that. As long as it's out of the way of her and it's not over all of the cake in there, so we can still see that it is, of course, a wedding and they are slicing the cake. And there's a knife in there because... Knife is key to the articles you've probably guessed by now. So here's the other technique then. So if I then with that selected, if I go back up to select all of this. And again, I can create a new paragraph style. I'm going to call this large heading yellow background. 
uh, apply starter selection and, and previews turned on. And then again, I'm going to click OK, hit the escape key on the keyboard. And then I need to go back with no type highlighted on screen, right click and choose edit. And then from here, go down the list and choose paragraph shading in there. So paragraph shading, turn that one on. Again, change the color to take a break yellow. Set that to a hundred percent strength of yellow. In here, some offsets, unlink those. And then I might just come back to them. I do want to make sure, of course, that this is set to text. So now we see it in there like so. Um, yeah, so we do need some offsets in here. So the right hand offset, change that to two millimeters. Um, I'm going to change the left offset to two millimeters in there like so. And then we need an offset up at the top as well for two millimeters. So that gives us our outline around there that we need. That's all good. I'll click OK to that. Uh, I then do need to go back in here and then anything that's in capitals needs to be in take a break red. And do the same down here. Double click on that one and change it to take a break red. Oh, and of course that one down there. Bad me. And there we go. Press the W key and then let's have a look at the entire layout and then hide these panels in here. And um, there we go. The only thing to do then is just to shrink this text frame down a touch and then change the angle in there to, uh, in this case, it's going to be the opposite way. It's going to be four degrees like so. Just pull that down a little bit. And um, it does have a drop shadow as well. So if I zoom back in here, go up to the top to FX, let's add a drop shadow in there. So it's just right at the top of the list. And in there, we need that to be a little bit tighter and a bit smaller. So if I just reduce the distance and then just reduce the size in there, and um, let's just drop the distance down again a little bit more, that should be enough and then click OK. So there we go. Um, we now have the cover done. As I say, I will do a follow up video to show you how you can cut the lady out in this layout for the front cover and get her hair going in front of the take a break logo type and things. It is one I've done in uh, the 442 magazine and things like that. That's pretty much all the type and layout done. Thanks for watching.